Tuesday edition of First Pitch here on Wager Talk TV. Rays, Tigers, St. Louis, Colorado, Orioles, Yankees, Padres, Dodgers, Phillies, Clubs, Phillies, Cubs. Do we fade the clinchers? And then we got best bets coming up in Mets, Bravos, D-backs, and the Giants. Plenty of games on a terrific slate. Getting you the winners. That's what we're aiming to do here. And joining me... The Morning Wager crew, final time we get to have you guys on the show this year as we're winding down the regular season, so you guys better come proper. Brian, no need to flex. We, we heard your, your squatting stories. I won't belabor the folks because they're here for actionable info, not hearing oh. uh, that, that bars uh, just, just don't work out for you. Those bars do, but squatting racks do not. We'll, we'll, we'll circle back to that, Brian, because first things first, you want to talk the game that goes in uh, in what two hours? This one goes at one o'clock. So um, any of our uh, our people on the rewatch are saying thanks for starting with a game that's already on while I'm watching your show. But there is a fast forward button that we know well with you, Bry. Rays and Tigers. I'm kidding, buddy. You better have a winner for us in this one, though, if, since you're starting us off. Scooble gonna be on the mound. How are we betting this one, man? Well, Dan, I'm trying to drive viewership to the live portion of the program here is what yes. I'm doing. It always pays to listen to live. And uh, all right, let's talk about this game. There is a lot of enthusiasm right now surrounding the Tigers, justifiably so. Incredibly, they are odds on favorites to make the playoffs in the American League. But a lot of that has to do with the fact two of their division rivals, the Royals and Twins, are just completely falling apart at the seams down the stretch. And I'm here to throw a little cold water on the Tigers parade. I like the Rays plus one and a half here, Dan. First off, this is going to be a low-scoring game, okay? You got Pepio and Scooble starting. This total, right before we went, uh, we started recording, uh, it dropped to six and a half. I know Scooble's been great. Most of the viewers do as well. He's unbeaten over his last eight starts. No more than three runs allowed in any of those eight. Probably going to win the AL Cy Young. But how about Pepio? Last time out, just one run on two hits. Went six innings. Career-high 12 strikeouts. 12 consecutive starts where Pepio has allowed three earned runs or fewer. And the Rays, somehow mathematically, still alive themselves for a playoff spot, despite minus 55 year-to-date run differential. They come in playing well also. They've won four straight, seven of their last 10, swept Toronto over the weekend. And as good as things have been, okay, in terms of wins and losses for this Tigers team, guys, the wins have not come easy. Last seven wins have all been by two runs or less. Two of them required extra innings. Only twice in those last seven wins have the Tigers won by multiple runs when the game finishes in nine innings. I just think of the three potential outcomes. Rays win, Tigers win by exactly one run, or Tigers win by multiple runs. The Tigers' multi-run victory, least likely. And wouldn't you know who has played the most one-run games in all of baseball this season? That would be the Tigers Mm. with 53. Daytime start, Dan, probably lessens the home field advantage. I'd go to the game if I lived in Detroit, but... uh, the, the attendance might be a little lower than they want. Give me the raise plus one and a half. Taking the run line there out the gate. And if you are watching on the rewatch and that game's going on live, either give Brian a shout out for the great play or just absolutely rip him in the comments. But either way, make sure you're commenting great below while you're hanging out with us. <laughs> hit that like button, hit that subscribe, hit that little bell. It'll get you notified when we're going live, when we're dropping single game videos. If you're joining us on social, that follow button goes a long way. Zeno, we were talking before the show. You want to take a look at this uh, this Cardinals and Rockies game. Um, let Feltner cook, baby. Uh, it took four months for him to finally win a game. But, uh, but since he's done that, two wins in his last three starts, is that the way we're going to look here again? Ride the hot hand with the uh, pitcher who seems like maybe he finally found it out now that it doesn't matter even a little bit. Big time matchup with major playoff implications in this one. But who cares if we can cash a ticket, Zeno? Uh, what do you think is the right side here? Well, look, I mean, when you get a chance um, to back Ryan Feltner, uh, it, it, it first, look, in general, backing the Rockies – it's kind of like an exposed nipple ring. You know it was painful, but there are just certain ways it can look good for you. Oh so this is what we're going to do here. We're going to take Brian Feltner, who in four of his last five starts has allowed two runs or less. And in fact, the Rockies have won five consecutive games that Feltner has pitched. And so he has actually started to turn the corner here. The opposing pitcher for the St. Louis Cardinals is a young rookie named Mike McGreevy. 
24 years old. Now, he's made two starts since being called up, right, this season, or two starts this season, one back in July, one since the call-ups. Uh, he looks really good. He's gone 10 innings, given up to seven hits and one run. Both of those were in St. Louis. Welcome to Coors Field, Rook. Welcome to the place where balls fly out of here. Feltner gets nearly five runs of support per start. The Rockies hit much better when they're at home. This is a great spot here for Colorado and Ryan Feltner uh, when you look at the way this whole thing lays out. So uh, I, I, I like the Rockies here, uh, plus the one and a half, best bet you can take there. I think they kind of have a great chance to win the game outright. The scary part is I I'd contemplated looking at the first five because the Rockies' bullpen is bad. But, again, this is a spot where I'll just take the one and a half at home, hold my nose and pull, and look away from that awful, painful nipple. Yeah, that's you got to look away because that is definitely painful for sure. That's the breakdown from our man, Mark Sino. Check him out, wt.buzz slash mz. Right out the gate, he got us, Bri, right out the gate. Yes, yeah, he I got know. us there, man. Um, all right, so, so with the two games you guys started off with, we have to segue now into the O's and Yankees because this actually does have some gravitas as the Yankees are looking to uh, close out this AL East title. This series could uh, could do it all. It's Kremer and it's Schmidt. I'd love to get both of your guys' takes, but Bri, I'll start with you in this one. Uh, anything stand out to you or because tensions are so high uh, could this potentially see a game where maybe you get a little bit more, um, you know, defense? Do we got a lower scoring game here, or is it all side for you as you look this one? Well, well first off, I can't wait to hear Zeno's breakdown of this because he's going to have to choose between a Yankees team, which he's ripped all year. If you listen to Zeno, you would Fair. think that the Yankees would be like three games ahead of the White Sox in the standings. And then the Orioles have Dean Kramer starting, who's like his least favorite starter, I think, in all of baseball. Dan, you have done it again. We joked before uh, the start of the show. I come into first pitch no. every week with about 10 to 12 games circled. I said, I am ready to carve up this card. And you always throw me the first game, a game that I really don't have all a right. good read on. I would, t I, I guess well, then, I kind of lean the Yankees, no. but the price isn't great. You're done. So but that's all I got to say. You're, you're cut off. You, I can't believe I picked the one. And you literally said, the first game that comes off the board that I didn't write down, I'm not going to have an opinion. That's why we have Mark Zeno here, because he does have an opinion, I'm sure, well, he's got on his O, on or the O's taken on his Yankees. Yes, he has an opinion on everything, Zeno. Th that is true. Opinions are much like belly buttons. Everybody has one. Also another anatomy part. Oh, well done. Has. Thank you for censoring yeah. yourself. I appreciate I that. Tried. Um, listen, uh, it's well documented what I think of Dean Kramer. And there's one word I used to describe Dean Kramer. He's a hump. That's it. Cause he stinks. Uh, however, he actually has been pretty good against the Yankees this year, despite his overall 4.19 ERA and his whip. That's one and a quarter Clark Schmidt making his fourth start off the IL first three have been pretty good. All things considered. Um, and Clark Schmidt faced the Orioles way back in the end of April a game that the Yankees lost, but Schmidt was really good. Went five and two-thirds, gave up just one run. Um, look, the Yankees have a chance to clinch this thing and put a dagger in the hearts of the Orioles and also a dagger in the heart of my Orioles win total over bet for the year. Um, and I, I think the Yankees get it done. I'll, I'll make this interesting point, and this will aggravate Brian Power. Um, oh, no. The Orioles are six and four so far against the Yankees this year. All four of the Yankees' wins have come by at least two runs. So I think it's worth mm. a look. Lay the one and a half with the Yankees. But Brian Power would tell you, you shouldn't lay one and a half with the home team because they get one less at bat. That's what you shouldn't do. So <laughs> uh, I would still look at the, the Yankees on the run line here. Lay the one and a half because one of two things happen. I think the Yankees blow them out and Schmidt is great and they get to Kramer early or guess what? Dean Kramer all of a sudden is, is Dizzy Dean and strikes out the entire Yankees lineup and, the, and, and Schmidt gets rocked and the Yankees get and the Yankees lose outright. So that's kind of the way I see the game unfolding. I take the Yankees on the run line. If you're going to play it, don't be afraid of losing right. a potential at bat. Um, Bry, yeah. uh, uh, you know, if you're a little like stuffy, that. you have a little cold, you might sound like that. If you have a cold, you yeah. might sound like that. Uh, to, to be what fair, you um, said all the Orioles X FIP and their EPA <laughs> per play is very high. They don't have an EPA <laughs> per do. play. It's a baseball team. Oh, sorry. Uh, so their uh, back bend, uh, their x step, and sometimes their exit velocity is higher than normal in smaller ballparks like Yankee Stadium. Why are you bouncing? I close my eyes. 
I think I have two. Well, I just I I, I was listening along, you know. I was I was listening yeah. along for you. Oh, I was talking um, to Zitto. I didn't but yeah, know if you I close my eyes, I think I got two. I got two Brian Powers on the show here. Uh, Brian, squared. this game goes. Go ahead, Zeno. Go ahead. BP squared. There's two of us. Yes, yes. BP squared, indeed. Uh, only BP. Be so this one goes. This one goes at ten ten. So please tell me, with a late game, you've at least had enough time to look at the pa- Padres and the Dodgers, <laughs> right? This this isn't one of the fifteen games that you do not have an opinion on because. This is a hell of a series, um, you know, really probably going to decide what you, you end up seeing in the NL West. And it features a guy, I know we all get caught up on that explosive game by Otani, but how about the week that the guy has had? Seven games, seven stolen bases, 17 ribbies, uh, a 1.668 OPS. Um, just un- the man isn't human right now is Otani. So does that continue here? Is there no way that the Padres can slow down what seems to be an absolute freight train, which is all things buzzing for this Dodgers team? Uh, anything jump out to you? Cause the price really either way, pretty enticing. You can make a case either way here. Dan, you've gone from asking me about the game, one game that I had no opinion on to taking my notes on this game, reading off Otani's stat uh-huh. line. Yeah. It just truly is incredible. Great game. Great week. Great season, six home runs over those last seven games, 11 runs scored. You mentioned the RBIs, how many steals in the OPS. Uh, I talked about this game on the Power Five this morning. I like the Dodgers in the first five. Look, uh, you talked about what a critical series it is. If the Dodgers win the series, they win the NL West pennant. Uh, San Diego is already assured of winning the season series with the Dodgers. They've done quite well head-to-head. But they've yet to face Landon Knack, who is starting tonight for L.A. Knack has allowed two runs or less in 10 of his uh, 13 starts this season. That includes five shutout innings last time out. Yes, the Padres, I think they're very live to win the National League. Come October, I think they're live to win the World Series. They've won 40 in their last 56 games. But, Dan, you talked about price. How often can you bet the Dodgers at home at this kind of price? And and the first five, it's only around minus 125. Mm -hmm. And you have the insurance of a push in case if things are knotted up in a tie after five innings. Too good to pass up for me. I'll back the Dodgers in the first five here. And, oh, yeah, we have that Otani guy on our side as well. Yeah, it it doesn't hurt to have a man who literally looks like he is. Uh, everyone else is in Little League, and he is in a league of his own. That is for sure. That's the way that Bry Power is going in that one. Hop below in the comments and let us know how you're looking to bet the late night special there. Can't even call it the Drew Martin, uh, you know, D-Gen special because that's a hell of a game going there. Uh, so, Zeno, if you have been paying attention to the fade the clincher theory that we've been throwing out there here on uh, on first pitch. You've uh, cashed three tickets. You have lost one of them. My Philadelphia Phillies, the latest entry in, and not only were they partying, they were partying like it was 2011 because that was the last time that they've gotten an NL East pennant there. Um, and now I just look at uh, who they're sending to the mound. Um, is this is this Tyra Banks that they're sending up there to go against Steele? I mean, this feels like the, the fade spot of all fade spots uh, with a Phillies clubhouse that has just got to rink or, or reek like Keystone Light. Uh, <laughs> is that the way that we would look in this one? Because even the price is telling you fade the Phillies here today. I'm surprised you went Keystone Light over either Rolling Rock or Yingling. Uh, a curious choice. Yeah, you're right. Pennsylvania in there to go Keystone Light. I guess uh, I've, 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 I've outed myself as a Keystone drinker, clearly. Uh, yeah, that's that's on me. Your <laughs> face least, over there. At least it wasn't that Iron City piss they drink in Pittsburgh. That's fair. Oh, that is fair. <laughs> that, that is, bad, that is swill. Bad beer. That is yeah. <laughs> Sandpaper, I mean, and that's that's what Brian, no, that's what Brian is on. There we there go. You go. Get Rolling Rock anymore? I haven't seen Rolling Rock. Is it still being brewed in PA? The green bottles. The green bottles were elite. I don't know. I, I mean, better. I'm in California now, so all I get is uh, is hard kombucha. That's all. That's the only options that we have out here. Is, is hard, <laughs> disgusting. Uh, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What, what, yeah. What, 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 yeah, we need the joint those, to get that down. What are those liberals doing to you out there? My God, I, it's it's not great. Sure. It's not great, Mark. It's, it's All right, well, not great. Listen, 
Oh, Gavin, I said what's up. Uh, nonetheless, uh, now that we digress from Clubhouse uh, celebration beers, uh, yeah, at, at Tanner Banks, um, who, if you look, uh, is still wearing a White Sox hat uh, when, yeah. if you see him Not great. on ESPN.com, which ought to tell you. Doesn't instill confidence. Like, not very good. Yeah, he, he's not very good. So, you know, I mean, if he's been part of the White Sox, guess what? He's not very good. Uh, nonetheless, it, you're going to get a bullpen game here from the Phillies. Tanner Banks is a reliever. So they're just going to throw arms out there because it's expanded rosters and they don't care. And there's nothing left for them to do at this point in time because, hey, guess what? They've already clinched the division and they're happy as a pig and stink. I do like the spot, though, playing the game after a team clinches because everybody just lets down. You know, the the celebration Mm -hmm. has happened. Even the next day's starting pitcher typically, you know, was celebrating. So, yeah, good spot here to take the Cubs with Justin Steele, who's been pretty good, all things considered. I know Brian Power and I sort of, Tried to find the spots where Justin Steele would finally get a win. In fact, he's got five of them. Um, nonetheless, he's been really good over his last, you know, couple of outings um, th- that he's gone. I mean, he's only given up four runs over his last, what are we looking at here? About 22 innings. Um, so he's been pretty solid. I- I- I'd take the Cubs in this spot and just not look away, you know, not not not, not think twice about it, just given the fact that uh, uh, it's a fade spot for for the Phillies. Yeah, again, you know, if if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Three and one, it doesn't lie there. I mean, the price, you know, it's not awful if you want to be back. And I mean, hey, right. maybe even look at, at laying the run and a half, getting an extra little plus money if a team is really just, uh, you know, going through the motions there. Uh, Bri, uh, for you, man, if you have anything you want to circle back, because I think, you know, we, we kind of hit on it there. But if you'd like to uh, give any thoughts there on that Phil's game, since you take meticulous notes on exactly a dozen games, I don't want to short you at all. Uh, but I know a game that you guys did talk about on the morning wager uh, was this Red Sox and Blue Jays game. And I know uh, an interesting angle that you had as part of the double play. I believe uh, Zinno was the one that was eyeing that one. But uh, anything for you? Because, you know, you talk about these teams that are clinching. Like the Red Sox, they win last night. But they're they're pretty much dead, dead. right? You know, if you just look at what they need to happen to make the playoffs, I, I wouldn't be uh, rushing to bet my Red Sox to, uh, to to make the playoffs here, throw in a late ticket on that because this is a team that, um, yes, they have something to play for, but you got to put that in air quotes. Yeah, so um, it would be Cubs or, or pass for me on that game that we just talked about. I, I would uh, co-sign yeah. with what Zinno had to say. Uh, yeah, and we like we both liked the Blue Jays in the first five in this game against the Red Sox. Uh, I talked about it on the Power Five as well. As a matter of fact, I recorded the Power Five earlier, and at the time, I was like, well, I'll just lay the half run in the first five. It's around even money. And the price has mm. surprisingly dropped on Toronto. Dan, and so I would just play for, you know, this was our show best bet. I would just go first five money line here with Bowden Francis and the Blue Jays. Let The Red Sox bullpen is trash, but the Blue Jays is not much better. So let's just hone in on the one thing that we really like, and that is Bowden Francis. Dan, this guy Damn. has just been otherworldly down the stretch. Seven consecutive quality starts. During that time, there's been two occasions where he took a no-hitter into the ninth inning, he's allowed five hits or fewer in six of those seven starts. Four of the seven starts, he's gone at least seven innings and allowed just one hit. So, yeah, I think we'd be in good shape backing Francis and Toronto in the first five. Home team should get a lead off Brian Bayo was a 5.58 ERA in eight career starts versus Toronto. So, yeah, Jays early in this one, first five. Yeah, I'm I'm with you there. I love the breakdown. That's Brian Power, wt.buzz slash BP is where you can find him over at wagertalk.com. Guys, let's get some best bets because the games that you guys are hitting on are ones that I know folks want to hear about. So, Zeno, we'll start with you. Let folks know what you have up. Just $5 can get them a play today. That's right. Tuesdays are $5 Tuesdays now at wagertalk.com. So let the folks know what they can find over at your page for just a link in and let us know how we're betting this Mets and Bravos game going this evening. Yeah, I have a $5 uh, baseball player, 4% baseball play, um, despite the fact that the Astros uh, did not do me good favors last night. Still up over 24 units. Uh, since August 1st in Major League Baseball. So we are continuing to hum along. I also put together, you want to know why, Dan? Because I'm a man of the people, and uh, they expect this from me. Good, bad, or indifferent. Another baseball three-pack up there. 
It's just 19 bucks. Why not? Because what the hell? I mean, if my $5 play sucks, you can spend 14 more and get, watch me get three more wrong. So knock yourself out. But I suggest <laughs> that if you'd like to do them all, like the, the price of one regular 4% play would be $25. You can get all four plays for $24. I think that's a savings. I believe that is oh, oh no. I believe that is a savings. And I I also believe that um uh, the, the Blue Jays and Red Sox bullpens uh, are a, a botched nipple ring piercing. Uh, that's how bad they are, Brian Power. Anyway, I don't know what you're blue, talking about. No, I, no, sadly we all do, and I'm gonna go throw up in a cup here. It, so uh, and, and the viewers to, now do as well. Well, I mean, I, I, I don't have, it's not often I get struggle. I struggle for words. I was afraid of words and now I'm afraid. <laughs> That's true. We all agree on that. Well, after, You're struggling for after words. The remarkable, one. I, I, I'm like, after the remarkable, after the remarkable sales right pitch now? he gave Bry, the man, the yeah, man does have a way with words. He's Shakespearean. Uh, you yes, know, you buy, yes. buy my plays because they suck. Uh, that's, it's, 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 it's an interesting it's tactic, Mark. Yes. I mean, that, that's what they, teach, honestly, that's what they exactly. teach you in the first day of sports handicapping school. They teach you that at the sales pitch. See, you see, it, it, Zeno, you see one nipple and, and you lose your mind. What you were going to tell us was a first five bet here in the Mets what? and the Braves team, uh, Braves game. What are we doing in the first five? We don't have to worry about the game. So, so. You know, ISO in, I just, ISO in. You can do this. Why the upside down horseshoe for the Blue Jays? Like, just what about a just a? I thought uh, it was just a spin post. Like, why do we? What do we yeah, do anyway? Uh, mm. Okay, uh, here we go. Braves <laughs> starting Spencer Schwellenbach, pride of the University of Nebraska. Look, he's been really good, um, really since the All Star break, uh, July first time frame. He's been really consistent. Hasn't been over well, overpowering in a lot of starts, but he's been just very, very good. Uh, you're talking about he's gone at least five innings in every single start, but one against the Twins where oh, he lasted four and two-thirds but didn't give up a single run. Uh, struck out eight, a lot of extra pitches. Walked three, a lot of extra pitches. So pitch count got up there, but uh, nonetheless, he didn't give up a single run in that start. So he's going to go five here, right? That we know. Uh, only gave up. I, I, and by the way, hasn't given up more than three earned runs since August 1st in any start uh, at all. Only given up more than three earned runs once since July 1st. That was all the way back on July 21st. So Schwalenbach's a quality starter. He's got a high K rate, too. You look at his numbers overall, uh, he's got 118 Ks in about 108 innings. So he's done really well for himself this year. I think he could take care of this Mets lineup. Luis Severino is starting for the... New York Mets. Surprisingly, Severino's been really good this year, all things considered, considering what he was last year. Um, but this is a, a Severino that uh, has faced the Mets twice this year, went at least five innings in both of them, gave up just two runs. Uh, Severino also holding opposing hitters to a 190 batting average the first time through the order. So that, by my math, gets us at least through two, if not three innings, uh, at a 190 batting average. So he's going to get halfway home keeping this thing low scoring for the, the Mets. And the Braves can't hit anyway. Their lineup is suspect at best. Sure, knock yourself out with Whit Merrifield and Gio Urshela and four guys who I can't remember because I just don't even know who's starting anymore for the team. So I like first five under four and a half here um, as, as a play. I, I think it's definitely worth a look here. It's going to be a tight playoff type atmosphere at Truist Park between these two teams. So I would expect defense and pitching to rule the day. We're looking for the under four and a half first five, and you can grab Zeno's winning plays tonight. I'm putting some good juju out there for you, Zeno. 19 bucks, uh, or grab them and fade away. It's 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 your call, but grab them nevertheless. That's the beauty of it, right? That's the beauty uh, just of don't it. Like, pinch it, them and twist. Grab them. Don't just exactly. pinch and twist. You know? oh, no. Exactly. You <laughs> if you if you the way you can look at it, like sometimes it's worth it. Like there are people I follow online to see what they're picking, so I know I'm not on the same side. Who that's very fair. People? That's 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 you know that's what walking bets are all for. All right, Brian Power, D backs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. Uh, what if I started yeah, my own a- segment, like calling flex bets, and I just did bets while working out in the gym? How do you think that would go? I over? don't think they would do as many numbers, but um, but someone <laughs> would like them. Someone would like. I mean, them. someone. Would I mean, like I, I could. I guarantee like you. I I guarantee you. I guarantee you. <laughs> I guarantee you. Any money, Zeno, uh, Prez would love them. 
I will guarantee that oh, I, I would lay any price that, that Prez that, would be commenting that, on every flex it, bet video. It's going to get uh, weird. I, I would lay the weird. limit on it. Lay the limit on that. Uh, Bry, as I said, this is going to be the final time we get the morning wager guys on first pitch because we're done here for the regular season. Friday going to be our last show. You can get the premium client plays throughout the uh, the, the uh, postseason. Uh, I think we'll have a deal heading into MLB postseason that we'll share with you. But I think we pretty much guaranteed whether the season was ending or not. This was probably the last time us three were going to do a show together uh, with the decorum we have brought here today. <laughs> Uh, but the uh, the well, maybe well, the well, show well. was the friends we made along the way, guys. Maybe that uh, maybe that's what we need to uh, to dwell on. But the best bet for you, you're taking a look at the D-backs and Giants because apparently nobody told the Giants it doesn't matter for them anymore. Um, it does really matter for the D-backs. You think they punch back a little bit here today, or are you going to attack it maybe a little bit different of a way than just going traditional side? Yeah, I'm going to go uh, take, take out an alternate market. I did give out the Giants yesterday on both for, uh, for uh, the first pitch. No, I wasn't on that show yesterday, but I, I did do my own show, Four or Five and the Morning Rager. I did those two shows, uh, so that was a nice fat underdog price on San Fran. If you check those shows out, before I get to the game, I just want to let everyone know my $5 play is a 4% best bet in college football for Saturday. Last Saturday, obviously won my first 5% max bet of the season. Texas Tech takes care of business against Arizona State. The line moved big on that game before kickoff, Dan. I think the line's going to move on this one as well, so get down today. You can't get that $5 price after midnight tonight. I am number one in football this season, despite a disappointing result Monday uh, with the Bengals, 68% combined NFL and college. So I like Arizona team total over four and a half for my best bet on the show. Yesterday, my read was about mainly two things. One, uh, I liked the pitching matchup for the Giants. Two, it was a bad spot for Arizona coming off a seven-game road trip where they had a big blown lead on Sunday against Milwaukee. Here, Logan Webb on the mound for San Francisco, but I actually like that the pitching matchup less for San Fran today. Why? Webb is not the same guy on the road that he is at home. I bet the over at his last start, okay, got a little lucky because Baltimore walked it off in the bottom of the ninth with the two-run homer. But Webb still allowed three runs all in the fourth inning. He now has a 4.36 ERA on the road this season and a 1.46 whip. Those numbers substantially higher than what we see from him at home, 2.83 and 1.03. So Arizona, who leads all of Major League Baseball and runs scored, okay, 5.5 runs per game. That number jumps to 5.7 at home. All we need is an average game from him tonight, Dan, and we're getting a plus price to boot on this team total over four and a half. I like Brandon Fott, but I trust the Diamondbacks bats more tonight than I do Fott. Arizona, team total over four and a half is my show best bet. Best bet there for our man, Bry. Love the breakdown. Keep those comments coming, folks. We appreciate you. Hit that like button. And Bry, I was remiss to uh, ask, you know, do you have a, a terrific pitch that that your plays are, are also going to stink tonight? Or do you have something up for $5 that you're a little more excited about than no, our man? I said, yeah. Like, uh, well, no, the, the only five, the, my only $5 play is that 4% college football best bet for Saturday. I gotcha. just made that $5. See, I so, was just, uh, I completely tuned out. Completely yes, tuned. Thank That's you for that, Dan. I, I, I picked up on that after you threw that to me. But here's the thing. What I just gave you, that show best bet, that is my only client play in baseball tonight. So you got it for free on the show. That's even cheaper than $5, Dan. What an incredibly $0. I mean, uh, what, just what an outstanding person Brian Power is. I mean, you know, despite that beautiful smile and the quaff of a hair he has, he just has a great heart. And, and that's, that's something to be marveled at. I will tell you this much, Dan. I am on Wager Talk today. Uh, so I will have a different oh. pitch to talk today, audience. However, I do have to warn you, the lineup is Tokyo Brandon and Adam Trigger. So if you guys can stay awake till about 1245, you'll finally uh, hear what I have to say. Oh, so I'm like, God. So I just, we have I Mark, I mean, I'm Mark Zeno is game. guest starring. We we have uh, Mark Zeno guest starring on War and Peace today as we're going to have breakdowns from Adam Trigger and Tokyo yeah. Brandon coming here. So if you want every blade of grass covered, don't worry. 30 minutes from now, Wager Talk Today coming your way. And we won't even have Teddy to steer the ship because he's got a bad case 
of the food poisoning. So it's going to be Prez oh, no. and Prez and more Prez. So uh, sending our best to our friend Teddy Covers. Uh, so appreciate y'all tuning in. Make sure you hang out 30 minutes from now. We got Wager Talk today coming your way. And Zeno, as he told you, we're going to have me. some yeah. best bets now, coming. Now me. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Yes, yes. So in about in about three days, three business days, you'll hear Mark Zeno on way to talk. I tell you what, I'm going to start a timer to see how long each one of them goes. I'm actually going to have a timer. I like that. Sit and we will. I'll be in the chat out. and I'll set lines and uh, and and we'll figure out how we'll get a win or something. Whoever yeah. can uh, can hit the correct line. So I like that. Zeno and I have a game coming up for you on Wager Talk today. You might win something. Stick around, find out best bets for these guys. Again, the Diamondbacks team total over the four and a half and looking at the under four and a half in the Mets and the Bravos. Check these guys out at wagertalk.com. We'll be back locked and loaded on a Wednesday edition of First Pitch, 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. on the West Coast. Until then, make sure you hit that like button. Enjoy your rolling rocks, your keystone lights, whatever you're imbibing with. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time here on Wager Talk TV.